Nichols here, and I'm doing it for millions, and I'm glad to be interviewing the very talented, very dangerous. Tyler Trump, how you doing? Doing well, man. Doing well. Excited to be here, and uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Excellent. And well, I just got to know this off camera, so might as well bring it up. Uh, you're located in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. Is that right? I am. Yeah. Me, yeah. Pretty me too. new. Me too. Me too. Oh, you're new. Yeah. You're new to here. Yeah. Been here a little under a year now. It'll be a year in October. Oh, rookie. This is this is almost year 21 for me, man. Like, so oh, man. yeah. I came up right after high school. Could never leave, bro. You know how it is. It gets stuck here, but it's a great, great city. So I hope it treats you well. I hope it encourages and, and furthers your uh, professional career like it did mine once upon a time. But we're talking about you, man. You're in the fight capital of the world. Was that the reason to come to Vegas? Uh, yeah, but actually not because of me. So uh, so I've been blessed to have a, a pretty incredible wife. Uh, she's way smarter than I am. And uh, she does some work in the sports nutrition field um, and has been wanting to get in that into that for a while. And uh, she actually works with the UFC PI um, as one of their sports dietitians there. Um, so that yeah. was the whole reason that brought us out here. Um, absolutely nothing I did. Like, that was all her. Uh, but yeah, and she's been uh, she's been loving it. So yeah, that was really what brought us here. And uh, and it's been good to us so far. We've we've really enjoyed being out here for sure. Dude. I'm glad. I'm glad. And that's uh that's why we've been one of the biggest growing cities for tons and tons of years in a row, minus the recession. But then other than that, <laughs> it's yeah, you know, we it's a good place, and I'm glad uh new beginnings and good things are happening. And dude, the PI, nice job. I've gotten to be there. What a great place to be, a great place to work. So happy for oh, yeah. her. Now bring it back to you, getting to obviously. Yes, you didn't spearhead maybe this uh, change in life, but you got you get to do it. So yeah. could you tell me a little bit about maybe the differences of or benefits of training in a mecca of fight like Las Vegas oh, man. versus where you were? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we moved here from Atlanta, uh, which has some like some decent gyms, especially for anywhere in the southeast, like probably the spot you want to be um, other than like maybe Florida or something like that. Um, where kind of those like bigger gyms and stuff are, but yeah, man, it's been huge. Like, so I train at syndicate MMA. Uh, so we All have right. some, some really good guys. Um, Hell yeah. And, you do. Man, the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when we, when I first came here and man, I was getting my ass beat every day, like absolute, I mean, just not even close. Like everybody here, like just the level of training partners, the quality of like guys that are already here so high level like and everybody like there's not a single person when you look around the room you're like oh man like you know i'm glad it's this guy like i honestly felt like especially when i first got here i felt like that was me they're like all right i'm gonna go with tyler like you know take an easy route because they're just killers after killers and then what's huge and like whenever somebody's in town for a big fight something like that like they're the people that are coming in and training so you get different looks and not everybody thinks about that or that's a really cool benefit of being in Vegas is when people are in town, they're either stopping, you know, by one of these gyms, you know, and you just get a different look for a week, two weeks, whatever. And then, you know, you get to pick up that little bit of information. So it's been cool, man. Like just the amount of improvement I've seen in, you know, the past like six months has been insane. And then even before that, like it's just been like night and day difference from when I got here to, to where I'm at now. That's beautiful, dude. That's that's what we you'd hope to hear, right? And this that that leveling up, that maturation process, that building of your game. And no, I I don't think enough people know about that part. Like I think a lot of people are pretty wise that Vegas is one of the meccas of of MMA, at least in the United States. But uh, that the part you mentioned, the like. Uh, Visiting the visiting right. the visitors, if you will, just like our great many tourists, but like uh, the visiting talent, like you said, because there's it's not just the UFC that fights in the city. There's a lot of other orgs that high, like you said, high level guys coming in just for a few weeks. But that's a, a huge experience. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Now, yeah. uh, do do you um, ever like cross train somewhere else? Like, say you're I don't know, maybe like a fight is somewhere else, and you're just like, hey, I'm gonna go hang out at that gym for the two weeks before my flight or something. I don't know. Um, not really, man. I've been pretty much exclusively over at syndicate. Um, I know like 
for me, especially just with it being super close, like, and we haven't been here, like I said, in Vegas for that long, just like creeping up on a year. Um, so yeah, I've really been wanting to spend like as much time as I can there, like build a solid like team and, and community, like be a part of everything that's going on over there. Uh, definitely because especially when you like move to a new place like vegas is weird because so many people are constantly coming in and out that man i was in training for like two months before they were like so do you like live here like you haven't left yet <laughs> you know what i mean uh, and then it's like finally especially because we didn't know anybody when we moved to vegas uh, oh. so we didn't know like anyone here uh, so being able to like come in kind of build that community i try and definitely spend as much time as i can there Hell yeah, that makes sense, man. You're you're, you're setting in roots, and that makes total yeah. sense. And uh, I'm glad I'm glad that, like you said, the the community and overall, it's been uh, helping you feel better and feel like you're getting that going. And man, that's a positive message. I like the part that you you're just mentioning the whole like, hey, oh, you you've been here for two months. You did. I thought <laughs> I don't know where you. That's that really uh, speaks, like you said, to the depth an overall talent like you said that's not just permanently here but also yeah. could be here for any reason so that yeah that, that's probably no, really a, sorry sorry go ahead no no go ahead go ahead yeah I was gonna say, that's probably something that did you have that like in your head like like that this is one of the benefits coming to vegas could bring or is it something you found out along the way it was kind of something I, I thought might be the case but really like found out you know along the way um and the other part I was I was going to mention, too, is like with the uh, just the training room, like the amount of guys that are here, like even on like a lighter week, you're still looking at like 30, 40 guys, you know. Um, so that's definitely like something where back home. It was like, you know, you maybe got like 20 guys that like are pro training. Most of them are like amateurs. You maybe got one or two guys in the UFC where it's like here. It's like, you know, you got 50, 60 guys half of them are in the ufc the other half are like on their way to be or have been at some point and it's just like the caliber of guys like so much higher because it's one thing to be like oh we had 50 people out on the map but when you're like oh we had like 50 ufc fighters vets and like up and coming local pros like it's different man for sure there's, there's 50 guys on the mat and most of them have world rankings of some sort right, right. like it's, right yeah, so you're like oh yeah shit. i mean yeah, and then there's always like the random like Russian and Ukrainian Georgian dudes. Especially right. we have a lot of Georgians at Syndicate because of Marab. Um, but he, man, there's like those guys. It's like especially you've never seen them before, never heard of them, and they are all so good, like so tough, so good everywhere. And then you finally see them like getting some bigger opportunities. You're like, man, I knew it. <laughs> like this guy's been beating all of us up for months. Like and I'm glad it's somebody else. <laughs> that's great that you mentioned that and like you're talking about that world talent level because a lot of people are not giving enough credit to the other organization and everybody loves saying the ufc because we love the ufc duh oh yeah but oh, yeah. but of course like pfl won and any other other majors ksw the probably some of the georgian brothers fought before uh and yeah. then and the rising all of these organizations that host talent like you said xyz the you might have not have seen them on the ufc banner before but that doesn't mean that they're not world level talent like you said coming around and and training that's that's solid so now that you've had this i know it's brief i know you you, ex you definitely mentioned that it's only been a little while yeah, on about a year or so in vegas but now that you've had this enough time i would guess to look back at training at home because some guys like small gyms they like the small gym feel mm -hmm. other guys like the big gym feel just by feel not saying quality or all that opportunity just what do you like more this this 50 guys on the map thing or the the dozen 15 guys mm. yeah i feel like syndicate for me has like been a really good fit of both of those like it's very like tight-knit where it's like for the most part other than like maybe a few additions here and there like it's the same guys that you see day in and day out okay so it's it's kind of like because some of the really big gyms like your ATTs or something like that seem to be a lot more like transient, if that makes sense. Like yes, guys sir. are constantly coming in and out, but it, it's kind of the same 50, 60 guys. So even though if there's a lot of people like you get to know everybody and it, you kind of get like your group of guys that like you train with more regularly because not everyone on the mat is going to be in your weight class and all like stuff like that. So it kind of like is I enjoy being a part of that, that bigger, like there's something big going on here. 
but then I've also got like that smaller group of, of my more regular training partners. So I kind of get both. You my know? man, you know what you just described? Anybody who's lived in Vegas going to know what you just described because <laughs> you just described Vegas. It's that yeah. world. It's that world renowned, big, famous. Everybody knows it. Big deal. Got good things going on. But at the same time, it's not all that big. And if you're into a sport or into an activity, the community is relatively good enough that you're going to get to meet everybody and know everybody. So yeah, that I, I like what you mentioned in there, that it kind of applies to Vegas life. That's funny, man. You, you're Absolutely. becoming a local more deeper than you know, my brother. It's, it's <laughs> sinking in. It's sinking in. Um, now, the quest of fighting. It, mm. It's obviously, it varies from person to person, story to story. What ignited you to go, I'm going to go fight? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, yeah, because I feel like it's definitely not a normal thing to be like, you know what, I'm going to go get punched in the face in my underwear in front of like thousands of people. Like, that's just not normal, right? Um, but yeah, it's not, man, abnormal. Really, it's not abnormal. It's not though. abnormal. It's not abnormal. No, yeah. no. Um, but yeah, I'd always like wanted to, I started training kind of later, like around 18, 19, um, which isn't super late, but like for, you know, some people that have been wrestling since they were like four. Um, that's a whole nother thing, but I just like wanted to get in shape. I'd been playing basketball and uh, and I'd always like wanted to do something like more contact, like karate or football when I was younger um, and never really got the chance. And one of my, uh, my friend's dads was like a personal trainer, like helping us out um, and doing workouts just with him every day. And we just started doing like some boxing on the weekends for cardio and man, and I loved it. Like, I was like, this is so much fun. Like we started sparring I have like one of my very first sparring sessions ever. Like it was just boxing and it makes me want to throw up. It's so bad, dude. It's so bad. Everybody, everybody starts, bro. Everybody starts somewhere. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that was like kind of how I started. And then I started watching the UFC and uh, actually, I think I have it somewhere. Yeah. This, the poster on the wall behind me, yes. um, the, the uh, Robbie Lawler versus Carlos Condit was like one of the first, like, big fights I'd watched Banger. and at the end of it I was just like whoa whatever that is like I want to do that like that's so cool uh I love so that, that was something that I'd already kind of been training I'd kind of been watching the UFC and I was like this is awesome like to be able to to go through that and then kind of once I uh I moved so I kind of grew up like outside of Atlanta and then when I went to college I moved uh debt like actually like downtown and uh and started training at the same time and then uh really just never looked back like that was kind of it we found i found this gym and it was like underneath like a restaurant in atlanta like super like sketchy place like the roof would always leak but it was like just a really cool place for me to start learning and uh and then like i said just haven't stopped and that was a long time ago yeah dude that's what's up i love it i love this origin story so much all the way down to the leaky roof the it's it's so it's so perfect man it's really gonna make a good uh origin story when it, when it comes time down the road to tell that history uh i like i like this i like this a lot um i really like the part where you're like i just i have my original sparring film this people out there if you if you've never done it just relax on your comments online when you're talking about these fighters and you see just because this brother just just admitted that i have my first one and i'm i don't even want to show it ever but this oh. guy like but th these these guys put so much and went men and women when i say guys is yeah. is so much time and effort to look as good and fluid as they do i i just i just need to point that out like oh yeah I, that 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 footage that everyone do you ever just watch it just for fun every once in a while is there something you keep like locked in your head like <laughs> i'll never be that bad again no no absolutely like at now it's like i'll be able to go back and like compare it to like sparring footage from like last week or something and you're like this is like insane like <laughs> night and day difference you know what i mean um i was thinking about it at some point like watching it back because i i have like a youtube channel that i do stuff on and it just hit me it's like i should totally watch that back because that would be like so horrible for me but it would be so cringy to, to do like a side by side be kind of fun 
Uh, that would be fun. And you, I think you deserve it, man. You deserve yeah. to go back and do the comparison timeline, the whole, you know, it's trendy, the how it started and how it's going, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There and, you and, go. And nail it. Now, I see you got some really nice setup, some nice posters and yeah. fight game gear set up behind you. I got to ask, I mean, obviously, if you just look you up real quick, they'll know you're a fighter, you know, everything that comes with that fitness and good stuff. But like, what was, what would something about you that we couldn't get from the internet? What was something like, if we looked all over the internet, but we wouldn't know that about you unless we like hung out with you in real life? Like, what's something about you that's not obvious? Oh, um, something I would say I'm a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a really tough question, man. Ooh. Um, I think like, Overall, I'm a lot more thoughtful than I look. I'm a, I'm a lot more like honest, I feel like, uh, especially more lately. Like that's been something where I'm very like, kind of like working on what you see is what you get with me, I feel like. So that's not something where like, if I'm having a conversation with like anybody, it's pretty much going to be the same. I wouldn't say I was always like that. Um, another thing would probably be like, um, uh, Oh man, that's a really, really good question. Uh, man, turn the lights on. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, I feel like that's something that would be more like a recent, recent change. Cause like, I feel like a lot of times with guys, like, or just with people in general, like, they sometimes are like one way with, you know, like these friends and they're one way with these people. And I've, I've been really trying to like just be me like all the time, um, just be comfortable with me. But I think like, another just kind of more fun thing super closet nerd closet nerd Absolutely. closet Bruh, nerd you know what's funny is the number of good fighters and number of killers that i'm meeting that coming out they're going hey secretly i'm a nerd hey i'm thinking <laughs> i'm thinking secret i think secret nerd is maybe the base for being a badass because <laughs> the amount of guys i'm meeting like you who 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 admit that on a low key is pretty high my brother so Just yeah I, <laughs> yeah i feel like it's definitely one of those things where it's i think to do um mma in particular well like you need to have a certain level of thoughtfulness because i think like they're definitely guys they're just like absolute like athletic freaks and can you know do that but i feel like the guys that are at a high level and at that high level for a really long time are the ones that are very very thoughtful in what they do even if it doesn't seem like it at the time like yeah. what when you watch them fight you might not be like that guy's super thoughtful but like my absolute favorite guy to watch is like Corey sandhagen and the way he approaches stuff and that to me like he's a perfect example of a guy that's like an absolute savage has a crazy fighting style but like you can hear him very thoughtfully like break down and explain everything and for me like i love that like absolutely all about being able to understand why having like technical reasons behind things. And I think that definitely feeds into that, that like nerdy or more thoughtful side for sure. Definitely. I, I, we hear it all the time. Fight IQ is important at being analytical of yourself and your opponent. Super important to process all that information. Super important. And then I like that. And Corey Sanhagen, great, great example. Yeah. He's like a, he's a solid, solid example of what they, the announcers call like a cerebral fighter, as they say. Yeah. Right? Like he's, you, you can see that the guy is actually admit analyzing, breaking down, and trying to insert like new data points, almost like a we're a living problem while he's fighting. That's pretty cool. I uh, like that observation. Now I'm going to turn it to something that pro has nothing to do with fighting. I'm just going to be honest. Okay. And I don't know if it's affected you at all, but I'm just going. I'm personally curious with a last name like that. <laughs> And a, and, a, and 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 the time of the year of the American calendar year is where we're at in, yeah. in our uh, political cycle. Is is this like does it ha, does it affect like do people make <laughs> dumb assumptions or like I'm assuming so. Like I'm assuming there's gonna be like unnecessary connection for no good reason. I mean, yeah, it's more like. Like, I don't very often get people to be like, man, like, I hate your dad, but it's like, <laughs> <laughs> like, um, but you'll definitely get people like almost, almost daily. If I meet somebody, it's like, Hey, like any relation, I get that all the time. Uh, I usually get more like people. I figure out how people think politically really quick. 
because it's either one of two reactions they're like hell yeah buddy that's awesome or they're like dude i'm so sorry like these last <laughs> like eight years or whatever it's been must have been hell for you like um uh, yeah and there's kind of no in between with that uh i've only been uh refused service in a mexican restaurant once wow <laughs> um, all right dude all that right. was crazy wasn't even like a real like it was like kind of one of those more like tex-mex places this was back in atlanta um and the girl like didn't believe me when i put reservations for the last name trump i was like hey like party for trump and she was like no like what's what's actually your last name and i was like that is it and she was like no seriously like my i like she made me like pull out my driver's license and show her it was crazy Wait, um, what are you the last name police lady yeah like... i know <laughs> it was wild uh but yeah. Jeez. yeah i mean even like kind of growing up it used to be like oh like the guy from the apprentice and then that really changed um <laughs> yeah so every every once in a while like it depends on what mood i'm in i might mess with somebody be like yeah like he's my uncle like whatever it's right. Not real. right and it's usually it's like no like and there is no relation that i know of by my, my grandpa's kind of looked into it on ancestry or whatever just out of curiosity and i don't think he's found anything that's what i've always heard Fair um, enough, but yeah, everyone, no one really has assumed I like vote for him or anything like that. Um, that was gonna be the other thing. People are like, oh, so like, are you gonna vote for him? I was like, maybe. I was like, I just hate paying taxes and not a big fan of the government. So right. whoever can sell me the best on that. Um, there yeah, you go. the last, yeah, the last election I wrote in Kanye just for fun, and uh, that didn't age well. Ah, sure. geez. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think it's, I think it's funny, but I could see how other people wouldn't think it's funny that, yeah. so, but I think, you know what, you know what, here's my, I'm going to just say this, your vote is your own. So anybody yeah, have yeah, a problem yeah. with whoever you pick, uh, forget about no. it, but no, man, I appreciate you opening the door on that. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry on behalf of the bozos who put any kind of leverage on it. Like let's, let's go run around with this last name. Cause yeah, there's many, there's many presidential last names and people carry them. You're just unfortunate at the peak. The peak value of this one is right now. So, yeah, you know, it is. But I'll and say this. I say this. I hope you go on a nice run. We we know Mr. President Trump actually does watch fights. I hope, I, even if you're not related, I hope you get the big famous boom when it's necessary. And it, it, it works out all in your favor just so it goes that way and all that, man. If you're going to have to, yeah. like you said, you're going to have to pay the tax. You might as well get the benefit. So if you're going to if you're gonna pay the, the, the Trump tax now, I hope the benefit comes uh, f full service later on. Yeah, dude, that's a that's a great point. I hadn't thought of that because when uh when I'd gotten married, I'd originally like I thought about taking my wife's last name just to get out of the conversations. Very I'm, like, not, like, super of you. political, one way or the other. So it was like, man, like let's just jump this off. And it's like, you know what? No, I'm gonna lean into it. Like I wasn't like, you know, just go with it. But <laughs> that's so just funny. That, yeah, dude, just hop on the mic and be like, you might be my dad. No. Uh, <laughs> No, oh, yeah, just just play into it, just just uncle it. You know what I mean? Just call yeah, him uncle. uncle. Just, yeah, just yeah. uncle. Yeah, just uncle Trump. Yeah, yeah. yeah uncle, uncle Don. Uncle Don, exactly. So then, then exactly right. If hey, when he's cage size at cage side at your fight, just play it into it. It's gonna go perfectly. Anybody who was really your fan in the first place would have seen this interview and they would have known better. So that's it's true. all gonna it's all gonna balance out, my man. All that's right, true. dude. This has been really fun, my friend. I, I, this is genuinely, I'm glad to meet you. I'm glad to meet another yeah. fighter in the fabulous Las Vegas Valley. Uh, not just thanking you for your time, but I want to give you the opportunity to thank anybody you want. Oh, wow. Uh, man, I mean, just, yeah, thank you for, for doing the interview, taking some time to, to you know, ask some questions. Um, I guess, you know, thanks to my, my awesome wife, Heather. Uh, she's, yeah, literally like done so much for both of us. Um, always helps with weight cuts and everything like that. Um, and then just a quick shout out to um, my guy, Brendan Marat, who fights on the UFC card this weekend. Biggest dude, this is crazy, but he is the biggest underdog in UFC history going what? into this fight. If you have extra money, put it down on him. Um, he's going up against a wrestler. Uh, he's only this, I think, his second fight in the UFC. It's relatively unknown. Um, this dude's so talented. Um, so, yeah, definitely keep an eye out for him. And uh, yeah, that was pretty much uh, pretty much the only shout outs I guess I had. We've got like some other guys too that we have a lot of guys in karate combat. 
Um, All right. Which is wild. <laughs> uh, that was another big promotion that uh, we have some guys in. So, yeah, just shout out to everybody over there at, uh, at Syndicate that uh, have been kind enough to let me train with them, join them, and be a part of the team. And, uh, yeah, that's it, man. That's beautiful, bro. Thank you for that shout out. Good reference, good inside information. And you know, I cannot leave this alone. I don't know if did you see, did you see uh, Karate Combat uh, ex expanded their rules to allow elbows now? No, I didn't. But just happened, just happened this week, bro. Just no like, way. Maybe yesterday or something like that. Yeah. So that is, oh man, that's one of our guys. Uh, he's helped me a ton, like especially with my striking leveling up. Uh, Brandon Jenkins. I know Mr. Jenkins. Hell yeah. Dude, the human highlight. Yeah, he yeah, is. yeah. Yeah, he's beaten me up so much. Um, and, and I know he's going to be really excited about being able to use elbows over in karate combat. I think he's got one coming up in a couple weeks or in, within the next month or two. So, uh, yeah, he's he's the man. Um, so I know he'll be super excited about that. Awesome, dude. He is an awesome dude and a good reference. Well, Mr. Trump, I thank you for your time. And yeah. Uh, Talk to you soon, my friend. Yes, sir. Appreciate it, man. We'll talk to you later. later.